Hey, this is Josh, and we're back from popular demand from the last video where Scott made, where we made a blue script that will lock up a, a certain amount of ADA, and then people would try and guess to unlock that money and claim the money for themselves. So this time around, we're going to take a couple of steps back, and we're going to look at some of the starter projects on the Plutus Playground. Specifically, we're going to kind of walk through and understand the code step by step and see how everything works. And we're going to show a couple of tricks of how Scott and I went through the, the script to learn and understand what's happening. When you ahead, this video will be technical in nature. You should be somewhat comfortable with programming languages like Java or C++ or C Sharp. You don't have to know Haskell, but if you know that, it would greatly help you understand a lot of the concepts that we'll be talking about. And finally, if you know Plutus, well, quite frankly, I really don't know why you're watching this video, but please do reach out to us. We have a lot of questions we want to ask you. So without any delay, let's get started. All right, so now we're on the Plutus Playground. We're gonna start with the first Hello World program. So in this program, we have a couple of imports and we have this hello function, endpoints function, MK schema definition and MK known currencies. Now, don't worry if you don't know what they are. I quite frankly didn't know what any of this was when Scott was showing it to me the first time around. We'll go through this. I just want to kind of give an example of what this project does. So for the Hello World program, we, if we first we need to compile the code, and then once it's done compiling, we go to simulate. So we have our wallets. We have wallet one and wallet two. These are individuals that are making transactions to the Ada blockchain to either store or retrieve money from a transaction. For now, we'll ignore that. And let's just say we're going to wait for one block. So we can evaluate. And what we'll see is the previous implementation. And what we see the simulator do is if we scroll all the way down to the logs, we see this contract log, raw JSON, hello road. If you recall, we go back to our code, back in our editor, we have this log info ring hello road. So somehow we're printing out this text in our log. Now, before we go into some of the implementation details, let's go over some of the high level concepts that we need to understand to make a Plutus contract. First concept we should understand are contracts. Contracts are essentially the logic we write for a Plutus app to handle the different transactions between wallets. Now we saw in our code earlier, we have this hello contract blockchain actions. We can ignore the hello for now and see that we have this contract blockchain actions, T text and these parentheses. Now, what are these? Prepare to have your mind blown, but what this actually is, is the contract is the data type, blockchain actions, T text and the parentheses are actually a parameter that goes into the contract. For those familiar with Java, this can be something like the equivalent of a, let's say a map. So we have a map that takes in an integer and another integer. All contract is, it's, it's a generic data structure that takes in three types, blockchain action, T text, and parentheses. Now, what are these? Let's go in and take a peek. Now, Scott and I were interested in what a contract actually was. So we pulled down the source code for the, the Plus framework, and then we spent a longer time than I care to admit trying to find the contract object. But we finally found it. It's inside the module language Plus contract types. And we'll leave the links to these files in the description below for those who are also curious. If you look for new type contract, we'll find this definition of contract. New type is just a way for us to create a new class, essentially. So we're creating a new class contract, which takes in three parameters, S, E, and A. So what are these? If we read through the comments, contract has a schema S producing the value of type A, which is the third parameter, or a contract error which we can see is this mode at error E. So basically a contract takes in a schema. We don't know what that is yet. And it either returns an error or it returns a certain type that we dictate. So in our instance, we use these parentheses, which is just Haskell's way of saying void. So in our contract, we either return a error or we return nothing or void. So that's what a contract is. But what's schema? And we're going to jump into this next. Now, at this point, 
we kind of at least have a rough idea of what a contract is. Not quite sure what it's used for, or really what are the parameters we're passing in, but we know it's a data structure. So the next thing we want to talk about is the first parameter that we're passing in, which is the blockchain action or the schema. A schema basically you can think of it as just a combined list of other classes, we'll kind of look into it later, that contains effects such as producing transactions, which is important for us to take and lock up data, and also very importantly, collecting inputs from the users to be able to make these transactions, and then also waiting for changes in the blockchain. So here we have our contract class. S for, is this blockchain action that we saw earlier. We'll kind of we'll take a peek into this. E, our error, is a t-text. And then A, our return type is void, meaning we don't return anything. So Hello Road currently uses this blockchain action. I'll just tell you right now, it's just a default schema that Blue has made for us. However, we'll be making our own schema in the next starter project. So before we go back into the code, let's look at what a blockchain action is. In our never-ending quest to satisfy our curiosity, we looked to find the definition of a blockchain action. Thankfully, it didn't take us as much time as it did the first time. We found it in the module language Plus contract where it was exported, and we look for a blockchain action. We find it is indeed a type, and we even have some comments. A schema for contracts that can interact with the blockchain via a node client and signing process. And we look at the definition of a blockchain action. We see that it is a wait slot, this weird symbol, watch address, and this other symbol, write the X, and so on and so forth. So what is this symbol? Well, the symbol basically just means merge. So we want to merge the await slot with the watch address, write the X, and so on and so forth into one, into one class, which is blockchain actions. Kind of if you think about it in a way, if you're for those familiar with TypeScript, this is kind of like returning an object that is that can be multiple things. For example, it can be of type integer and string. Well, I guess TypeScript doesn't have integer, it's number. So it can be the variable, the parameter could either be a number or a string. Feel free to look into the code for some of these other effects that are being created. But long story short is if we want to make our own code to take in inputs from the user then we need to create our own effect and add it into our blockchain actions. So it'll be something like my custom effect. And we'll look at that in the next project. Finally, before we go back into the code again, there are three important boilerplate code for every Plutus app needs to have. And that is a endpoint, MK schema definition and the AMK known currencies. All that endpoints is, is that it's a function that returns a contract of whatever schema error type and return type that you've made in your specific app. And it will be used by the Plutus playground to display their UI and run your code. So every single time, all you have to do is say endpoints and make that equal your contract implementation. Finally, we have the MK schema definition. This is just a way for you to set the schema that you'll be using. So just pass in whatever schema it is. If you don't have one, just use the default blockchain action, like in the hello example. And then finally, just set up this MK known currencies. It's mostly used just to make the playground work properly. You just have it at the bottom of all your Plutus app, and that's all you need to do with it. Now, taking everything we've learned already, let's go back and look at our code. So the first thing is we have to understand is what this funky hello colon colon syntax is. For those familiar with Pascal, they know that this is basically just a function. So the first line is the function definition, and then the second line is the function implementation. If we were to translate this code into something we understand like Java, it would look something like this. We have public, and our return type is a contract object with the three parameters, blockchain actions, key text, and void, and we call the function hello. We would return log info because remember, we want to return a type, a type of contract. So we call log info, which takes the parameter string, 
hello world. And then we just close our function. So we don't know what log info does, but based off of the fact that this code compiles, it must do something to return a contract. And it, it must also somehow print the string inside the log of our code. Now, before we take a deeper dive into what log info looks like, we have defined our function, which will return a contract. And so back to our endpoint that we talked about, uh, this is how Plutus knows what to show in our UI. We have to define this. And we just say our endpoints return a contract, which is whatever contract that we define in our code. And all we do is we just call hello, which would give us this. And then the simulator will take care of the rest. And then for our MK schema definition, we have to make sure that the code knows what our schema is. And so we just return blockchain actions. If we made our own schema implementation, which we will in, a, in the next project, we will just return that. And then finally, we just have this MK known currencies, and that's it. And that is basically how this Plutus script works and how you might go about understanding what is happening. And before we move on to the next project, let's take a quick peek at log info. Now, back in the contract file that we were in before, where we had defined our blockchain action, if you actually scroll down a bit, you'll see that it has a function that's important called log info. So what this function reads is function, and we have a constraint where our A is of a type called 2JSON. But that's not important. What's important is the fact that the function definition is that log info takes in a 2JSON parameter A, and the function returns a contract of type SE and void. And so in the definition of our log info function, we see contract dot L log info dot 2JSON. This is just more Haskell syntax, but essentially what this is saying is the dot is the composite function. And what it basically means is that it's a mathematical terminology where basically what we're saying is for the function f, take in the type that you would get from the function g with the parameter x. So basically we call a function g and we give it the parameter x and whatever that return type we would give to the function f, which would then return something else. So what basically what we're saying is in this function is contract l dot log info, and then that will be calling a dot two json. L dot log info is a existing function from Haskell which prints the given string into the console. We don't know what contract does, but we assume it's basically just returning the contract class that this function needs to do. Otherwise, this code wouldn't compile. And so that's essentially what log info does. It just prints out the string you give it, and it returns a contract type. Now, if you're still with me in this video, first of all, thank you. And second of all, you should have a rough idea now of how the Hello World application works, and even understand what a contract and the schema is in the Plutus framework. Now, unfortunately, this video turned out a lot longer than I thought just to explain six lines of code. So I'm just going to cut it short right here at the end of the Hello World program. Now, if you found this video helpful, please consider hitting the like button and possibly even hitting the subscribe button to get notified when our next video, where we talk about the start game project, where we'll actually be able to start handling transactions from users and storing it in the Ada blockchain. But until then, I'll catch you in the next video and have a great day.